In this video, you will see the development of a simple Stirling engine and thermodynamic recordings showing its application as a propulsion unit in a boat. Hello and welcome to DIY Forge. In the first version of my engine, I focused on simplicity and the availability of materials. I used plywood as the base of the structure and can served as the casing. The aesthetic value might not be the priority here, but functionality is the top priority. I used a balloon as the work piston. It works in a surprisingly simple way. The balloon, filled with air, presses against the piston, moving it and providing rotational motion. Thanks to this solution, I was able to achieve quite good results. This approach allowed me to build a working device at minimal cost using simple tools. In the next version of the engine, I focused on improving its thermodynamic efficiency. This allowed me to significantly increase the engine's RPM. Enhancing the thermodynamic efficiency was key to obtaining greater power and performance from the engine. With this improvement, my engine ran even more smoothly and efficiently, which was a remarkable step forward in my experiments. Despite the successful implementation of the engine to power the boat, the achieved speeds were surprisingly low. Even with the increased thermodynamic efficiency, the engine could not provide sufficient power for the boat to move faster. This challenge prompted me to conduct further experiments and improvements to enhance the engine's performance and achieve the desired results. When I purchased a thermal imaging camera, I had the opportunity for a more detailed analysis of issues related to engine heating and cooling. This allowed me to identify areas of excessive heating and spots that required better ventilation or thermal insulation. Thanks to this precise analysis, I was able to optimize the engine's operation more effectively, resulting in the desired effects in further tests. My attempts to cool the engine with air proved less effective than water cooling. Despite numerous experiments with ventilation and airflow, the engine's temperature remained too high. It wasn't until I decided to use water cooling that I noticed a significant improvement. Water allowed for more efficient heat dissipation from critical areas of the engine, which significantly lowered its temperature and improved performance. This observation was crucial for further refining my project. In the next phase of testing, I decided to replace the working piston with a steel piston and the cylinder, which I obtained from dismantling a hammer drill. This decision was driven by the need to increase the engine's durability and longevity. The steel piston was intended to provide greater wear resistance, and the cylinder from the hammer drill was perfectly suited to my needs. This was another experimental approach aimed at improving the performance and operation of my engine. Another experiment involved placing the entire engine mechanism inside a housing. This decision was driven by the desire to simplify the construction, which would reduce the assembly time to just a few hours. By housing all components in one place, I also aimed to increase ease of use and reduce the number of moving parts, potentially decreasing the risk of damage and malfunction. I am currently working intensively on creating a complete DIY Sterling engine kit. You can find more details about this in the video description where I explain the creation process and present all the necessary information and materials. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions, I encourage you to discuss them in the comments.